I needed to talk to you about a couple of issues that we, we have recently. We've seen a number of parents who we may be contacting the state about possible or potential fraud situation. Uh, a lot of it seems to stem from life changes mm -hmm. that weren't reported uh -huh. to us on time as required. Some of it could have a significant price tag on it uh, that drifted a long period of time. We're looking at one parent who may in essence owe us back about sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars Wow. So Joe, the, when you say life change, do you mean that parents who have school readiness services, they are required by law to change, to call our office and let us know or send us an email or some kind of notification that something in their life has changed as far as work, uh, salary, have they changed jobs, do they, have they changed providers, anything that would directly connect back Mm -hmm. to their school readiness funding if they that's that's what you're calling a life change right right what happens is when parents come into our office and doing the eligibility process they sign what's called a terms and condition I think one of the challenges may be they don't understand that that's actually a contract that they have uh -huh. to live up to right. in order to right. continue to receive right. the services. I, I, I can't agree with you more that uh, honestly, I don't think parents always leave us with the understanding about how very serious it is when they sign these this paperwork. I think that they're so uh, in a hurry to get the child care so they can go to work or actually even keep their jobs that they're really they'll sign whatever you put in front of them but Joe school readiness funding which is what pays for them a parent to uh, have their child in a quality child care setting and then be able to go to work that's school readiness funding but that funding isn't free that's really taxpayer dollars and so a lot of times I, I don't I don't know if a parent realizes somebody is paying the full cost of their child care and it's not them they're only paying a portion of it so I, I think they're just signing but if if they would realize this is a legal binding contract and it's no laughing matter to consider it anything else. I think maybe parents would look at their requirements of this contract a little bit different. I, I completely agree. We've taken some additional steps in our meetings with parents. We've actually started giving them a, a, a sheet of paper, like a check, that shows what child care cost can be that Good. they would incur that's coming from right. the state. And when you figure that for the most part, if a infant it's $125, $130 and least. say right, and the parents only paying five dollars of that per week. Now when wow. that you know, wow. so you're talking about $120. If you don't pay attention to that initial terms and conditions, which in essence, and we may change it to the contract. Right. right. The contract that might be a good idea. with us. Mm -hmm. You know. You could end up losing your services, oh being prosecuted for fraud, prosecuted. prosecuted, and still be required to reimburse the state, pay wow. restitution. Well, that makes sense, though. It's state money. Absolutely. It's not the coalition's money. It's not the provider's money. It's taxpayer dollars that have been, uh, the state actually suspend, gives back to us to ensure that that people who really qualify are in these services because they're eligible and because they need them. But Joe, you're talking about how much somebody might owe us back. $1,600, you've got one parent right now. Right. And, and you know, Joe, if we, if that, we didn't get that money back, she, we have to send that over to the state's attorney's office. No, I just walk right down the hall to the next office. Yes, I we have do. a you're Department exactly. of well, Financial you're right. Services. We do have right an investigator door. now who is sharing office space with us. And not because we automatically think parents are guilty of fraud, but simply because we are uh, a semi, we're funded by the state of Florida. That's where our funds come from. And one of the things we, we 
need to make sure providers are aware of also. Now once a, a case goes to the Department of Financial Services, they investigate that case from A to Z. Wow. And the question may come up, were you aware that this True. parent was no longer right. working? Did you know that this parent you know, had changed big. job? Yeah, it very just, big. Maybe, maybe we just had to put a sign up at the front. If you sign it, you better know what you're signing. Well, you know, you're right. If when you we, sign it, you uh, own yeah, it. Yeah, if you sign it, you own it. Uh, I, I like the idea of uh, having a, our, our terms and conditions change to say parental contract and also that you understand you'll have to A, pay this money back, B, suffer prosecution, C, uh, lose your all of your child care services. Joe, what you're telling me could amount to, if they just had two children, they're talking about child care so they can work, mm -hmm. costing right around $12,000 a year. $12,000 a year. Well, Joe, when you make that's seven... That's one child. That's, oh my, when you're making only seventeen or 18000 that's a big chunk of change. You're not able to work. And so if you're talking about those three things happening, or D, which would be all of the above, it's one thing to lose your services. It's another thing to not have any services and in addition have to pay the money back. It's, it's just not worth it. And so uh, I think we have two, two types of parents. I think we've got the parent who knows exactly what they're doing and they intend to be fraudulent. I don't think that's very many. Not knowing what you're saying, yeah, not asking true. the question, is not a get out of jail free no, card. No, it's not. You're right, and I've said in the past that I don't think they understood. But unfortunately, that won't save them, will it now? No, it won't. No, it won't. Because we have put it in writing and they signed it. They signed it, pick up the phone, they have a 10 day window to notify us about life changes. Even up to if you lose your job. If you lose your job, you still need to contact us. Your services are not terminated See, immediately. See, I don't think they know But that if yet. you don't notify mm -hmm. us within that 10 day window, then you disallow yourself of any other options Absolutely. that we may have to work with you. I think again, they don't understand that we actually have the ability, if they lose their job, we can put them on a 60 day, two month job search, can't we? Correct. A and maintain child care. And we usually do it in uh, 30 day increments, two 30 day increments. That gives us the opportunity to check and see where they where are. Where they're at. And, and monitor see if they the, need the support, process. If they sure. need support or anything we can do for them. It's, it's almost to a, a point where as when you come in and you sit down, and I know that parents are excited to get the, yeah, they are. the services. They've been the on the care. wait list for a They've while. They've been on the mm -hmm. wait list. But you've got to know what you sign. That's a part of you know your personal exactly. education, your personal responsibility. Right. Contact us either through our website at elcnwf.org, check us out on Facebook, or give us a call. We will be here to support you. Check it out.